Second Chronicles. Here we are reading the end of an era. Thanks for joining me on my morning prayer walk, my devotional time with the Lord. One of my favorite places to come is the California State Capitol. She is so beautiful early in the morning. And I am here today because I've been praying about the leadership as I've been reading First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and First and Second Chronicles. Today, we are in Second Chronicles. And I'm reminded since 1849 that the state of California has had 40 different governors. Some of them have been exceptional leaders. Others, not so much. Our history in California have had governors that were so good and so righteous, and others, not so much. History will record the corruption of different leaders, both at the state governor level and even the President of the United States of America. When we look at leadership in the book of Judges or in the book of Kings or Chronicles, we discover there are good leaders and bad leaders. And that's how the story ends in 2 Chronicles. It covers this period of time of the leaders of the southern kingdom of Israel, beginning with Solomon, who was the last king of the United Kingdom of Israel. It begins in 2 Chronicles with him completing building the temple of the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 1. He completes the construction of the house of the Lord. And in chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles, the Shekinah glory falls upon the temple. But the future of the southern kingdom of Israel and Israel itself is in the hands of the leadership, righteous or unrighteous. And today I'll share with you all the different kings of the southern kingdom of Israel, 20 of them. Some were good, some were evil and corrupt. The Bible tells us in chapter 29, verse 2 of 2 Chronicles that Solomon started his leadership role doing everything that was pleasing in the sight of God. 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 2. But by the time we come to chapter 36, verse 14, the leadership had been corrupt and it became unfaithful. Each one of these stories tell us the legacy of every leader until ultimately they had turned their backs on God and we conclude the story of Israel, this era of kings, in Second Chronicles with the fall of the city of Jerusalem. Chapter 36, verse 19. King Nebuchadnezzar, the leader of the Babylonian Empire, and his army burned the city of Jerusalem, including the temple of God. He tore down all the walls of Jerusalem, burned all of the powers, uh, palaces, and completely destroyed everything of value in the city. But that is not the end of the story. You see, we serve a God filled with mercy, and grace and love. And though Jerusalem is destroyed in verse 19 of chapter 36, in verse 23, we read about God's redemptive plan. For now, when we're in verse 30, 23 of chapter 36 of Second Chronicles, Israel had been taken captive by the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and now the Persian Empire and the king's heart was stirred. And the king stood up, stirred by the Holy Spirit, and said, The Lord has appointed me to rebuild the temple in the city of Jerusalem. And he would release the people to return back. 
and we'll be reading those stories, but this morning my focus on the west steps of the California State Capitol is to speak to you about the hope we have by the power of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's eternal redemptive plan, no matter where we've been or what we've done, God loves us. Our hope is in the sunrise, and I'm not speaking about the sun that's coming up from the east. I'm speaking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing too difficult. There is nothing too hard. There is nothing impossible with Almighty God. And Israel in 1948 was restored as a nation once again. And no matter where we've been or how difficult life has been, God loves us and His grace is truly amazing. You be blessed today as you fill your heart with the hope of God's amazing grace, in Jesus' name.